Hey, what's up, folks? Jay Barino here, continuing my brutal walkthrough of Legacy of the Void. This is the final mission of the main campaign, Salvation. So, let's check out our unit variations. I've gone over many different possibilities here, and I really think that the easiest, most straightforward to use is Nerezim Void Rays and Iron Carriers. And it seems kind of cheesy, huh? Void Rays, yeah, but it's true. And with the Carriers to heal up the Void Rays, it really makes this much easier because the carriers will keep your void rays alive and you won't have to be replacing them as frequently especially through the early game and then uh, kind of through the, throughout the beginning you make some of these vanguards to help clear out and thin out the enemy waves there's many other ways to beat this mission though many many others uh, what I would recommend if you're looking for something a little more interesting is you can put reavers on the top of ramps you can utilize dark templar along with Corsairs, those two groups together. The Corsairs will kill any Golden Armada units that come your way. They will just murder everything in the air if you have, like, more than 12 of them. They will kill everything. And uh, the Disruption Web allows your Dark Templar to jump in and kill everything on the ground. So, again, more interesting things to do. You can use uh, Confusion and Mind Control with Dark Archons, Storm with High Templar, all completely valid. So what I'm trying to show is what I found to be the easiest. So shout out to user Caleb Stearns, frequent viewer here. He's the first person to tell me about this. I've seen it many other places, though, and I've tried out a lot of different ways. I've beaten this mission a few different times now with different strategies, and I found that this, these two units together to be the easiest, in my opinion. So, Solar Core, Solarite, not really as important. Last mission, Solarite was important, unit variation was not. In this mission, uni unit variation is important, Solarite is not. So, what I would like to do is, um, well, actually it looks like I've got everything set up. I did just practice this mission just in case, but I think I've got it under control. Chrono Surge is great. You just want to use it two or three times before you lose it. Solar Lance can help you just nuke waves if you're going to have trouble on a specific side, but otherwise don't worry about it. Orbital Simulator, as usual, fantastic. The only thing that I might consider is bumping down all my auxiliary systems to get Phoenix. Though, it's, it's really not that useful. Shield Overcharge is fantastic. And uh, I'm going to go with Solar Bombardment this time around. That can just nuke down an entire wave. And it's on a cooldown. It doesn't utilize uh, any energy on the Spear of a Dune, so I say why not. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to skip all the opening cutscenes, though, because I want to just get started. The keystone. Whatever, Carex. I'm going to skip you, Artanis. So this mission is... It can be overwhelming, and I'll show you one quick tip to help you if you're getting attacked in multiple areas and you're not sure what to do. There's one real easy thing you can do to get things quickly back under under control. I can't guarantee it will work every time, but it may help, because uh, half of this mission, I think, is psychological. Like, you feel you're getting overwhelmed and you just sort of give up. So we're going to skip this, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'm just going to get started here. What I'd like to do is uh, saturate these minerals, go ahead and grab uh, gas right away. Be ready to assist them at a moment's notice. And then just get uh, lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of probes. I did get the uh, the buff where you're standing in pylon power, which I think is helpful because you can throw down pylons pretty easily at each entrance. And you want to take this very very quick, and then use uh, your first chrono search to get probes to saturate that base. Alternatively, you can get probes to saturate and get. Uh, or you can use Chrono Surge to get uh, upgrades. What did I say? I said something completely different. Anyway, we're just going to get uh, weapons pretty early on. We're going to get some extra vanguards to help us defend, and then we want to get one or two of those carriers to help us just heal up very, very quickly, like I had mentioned in the past. So uh, let's just kind of keep up with our normal probe inflation. The enemy approaches. Nerezim, ready your war blades. We shall hold the line. So it's, it's real tempting to use Solar Lance on this early attack, but I would say don't even waste your your stuff. Uh, they can really defend themselves. I mean, I, I really wouldn't want Vorazun to die, but if she did, it's really not the end of the world. Um, they, they'll rebuild their other stuff, and the attacks are infrequent enough at the beginning of this that it, it doesn't matter if something else happens. Alright, so let's go ahead and throw this down, and I believe they come to the pur either the Purifiers or uh, Alarak next, so we'll send someone over here. Just keep making probes. We've almost got our Chrono Surge up. There we go. There's our Nexus. We're going to set up uh, some pylons here for some cannons. So, Amon intends to lay siege from all directions. Step forth, Dark One, and face Alarak, High Lord of the Taldarim. I want to point out, you want to make sure you have enough money stockpiled, like I did not, uh, when you Chrono Surge, so that you can actually utilize... You, you can utilize the full extent of Chrono Surge. So you need a lot of money for that, but... We did fine. Here's an instance where maybe we want to try to keep Alarak alive. Actually, is he already dead? Did he already did he already get killed? I think Alarak already got killed. That's fine. It's not a big deal. 
Uh, I really wasn't paying attention. I think he's gone already, though, unfortunately. We're going to come over here. We'll help the purifiers next. And just start making some of those void rays. Start making those uh, those vanguards when you can. When that's Third Nexus is done, we'll uh, transfer. Probing our defenses, searching for weakness. Show him none. Okay, and I'm just going to save my energy for more and more chrono surges early on. And we can, again, defend against this stuff really early. It, it seems like there's more here than there really is. And... Well, okay, there is a lot here, but the thing is, your allies will rebuild their stuff. The attacks are infrequent enough early on that it doesn't matter. Okay, good. We're going to back up. We'll go back and uh, help out Alarak. We're just going to keep saturating these bases. Keep making probes. That's the most important thing you can do. Okay, and then you can also make a couple... I mean, you can make a couple cannons in the back to support. Especially up here, you want to make sure you keep that base alive. Meanwhile, uh, I'm going to get a fleet beacon. Dark Templar also could be really helpful here, though uh, either that or Vanguards both do huge area of effect damage. So let's head on up here. We're going to help her out. Uh, Chrono Surge is up. We have a lot of money, so let's go ahead and hit that. Make sure you rally. Okay, looking good. And they're fine. So let's head back here. We're going to keep stockpiling our money. We got a lot of probes now. Uh, too many probes, actually. Most powerful ships against the Keystone. As painful as it will be, we have no choice but to destroy them. Okay, so I would recommend getting these carriers earlier rather than later. It may seem like you want more, more stuff, like more units earlier, but I would again recommend just going for these carriers. They're going to help heal up your stuff. Shields, and then we're going to get air weapons. This stuff is quite annoying. This is a good opportunity to just use your first. Uh, solar bombardment. Reason being is it's on a cooldown, so you might as well use it every time it's up. You want to get the most out of that that you can. Okay, great. And then just kind of keep an eye out on where you're getting attacked. When you have extra money, it's a good idea to go ahead and uh, reinforce each side with cannons, but you're not going to have a lot of extra money early on, and actually we're supply blocked right now. So let's make sure that we get... You want to get extra pylons as well, with the anticipation that you're going to lose pylons on the uh, on the sides of your allies. I want to go ahead and make cannons down by Carex, and the reason I do this down here is because they send a lot of stuff against Carex, and, well, every side gets a lot of stuff. What I should say... What I, rather, what, I sh what I'm meaning to say is... Um, this is a good spot for Solar Lance is that Carex is the furthest away from the other for the other uh, ramps. So if you divert to go and help Carex, you're probably going to get caught out on another side because your uh, your allies are further away. Again, you got uh, the Nerezim and uh, the Taldarim that are fairly close to each other, whereas the other stuff is not. Let's go ahead and get more, just a couple more carriers. Not a lot. Get like three or four carriers. The Golden Armada has begun attacking the Spear of Adun. I'll try to support your forces, but we're taking heavy damage. Okay, so I, uh... This vessel serves as a beacon for your hope. Your faith is misplaced. Right, right, right. He's gonna taunt you a lot. Don't let it get under your skin. Don't let it get under your skin. The enemy is sending a torrent of forces down the central path. The Tal'Darim will need reinforcements. Okay. So we're just going to send our stuff here to help them. Don't panic at this part. They send a lot of stuff, but... I mean, if Alarek was here, this is where he would most likely die. And that's okay. It's all right. I mean, he's going to he's gonna die. He, all your heroes are probably going to die. The only one who might stay up is... Uh, is Vorazun, maybe. Uh, this is a good spot. You wait for him to clump up a little bit and then just solar lance the crap out of him. Mm, that feels good, doesn't it? Okay, and then our carriers are going to heal up anything that's that's wounded in between each wave. That's in, that's why it's important to have those carriers. All right, come on down here. We're just going to keep making cannons. Fleet of ships set a course for the Keystone. They must be repelled. Okay, now I'm going to go up and uh, help the Nerezim and just kind of assume that the purifiers can take care of themselves. They might not be able to, but hopefully they'll be okay. Um, but I'd much rather go, get up here and take care of these really annoying, uh, this really annoying stuff. This is a good spot to use uh, shields, just because you're getting hit on two sides that are very, very vulnerable. Okay, and again, uh, trying to not lose a lot at this stage is really important because um, you can build up your stuff and save your money to make cannons later. Otherwise, you're never going to really get maxed out. You're constantly going to be trying to reinforce, which can get really, really frustrating because you're never going to, you're never going to quite get maxed out to the way you'd like to be. Uh, shields and air weapons, very important. Uh, I need, I would like to get at least one more Stargate. 
Though, uh, you can't really afford to produce off of all of them, so don't worry about it too much. Let's go ahead and get rid of that warp gate before they warp in a bunch of crap. Immortals get on down there, or vanguards get on down there. Okay, and we're not losing any Void Rays here because we're getting healed up. That's very, very important. All right, we lost Chrono Surge. That was expected. The next attack's going to be the Nerezim. Weak, powerless, submit. The Spear of Adun has taken a direct hit. The Fabrication Matrix is unresponsive. Chrono Surge can no longer be activated. Okay, Borazun somehow still alive, but and that's fine with me. She's really, really good. Now, I want to point out your allies do sort of level up. With each, uh, with each attack. So, like, eventually, the Taldarim will get a mothership out, and eventually, these guys will get Colossus out, and, and things like that, which is uh, really, really good, of course. As you can see, I'm mostly focusing on cannons down by Carrix, because it uh, takes us the longest to get down there. Also, our carriers heal up our allies, too. So that's why uh, they're very, very, very helpful. We'll get a few more. Let's hotkey all of these, and let's check how we're doing with our upgrades. Oh, so what was I saying? I have a, a really simple method. Oh god, we're overwhelmed. We're getting attacked on all three fronts, and I have an army, but I can't. there's no way I could split up. Here's what you do, real quick. You pause, all right? Hear me out. You're overwhelmed. Half of it's psychological. The minimap is exploding in five or six different directions. If you have an army, and you split it up correctly, you could survive. So you want to keep an eye on, pause, take a breath, don't get overwhelmed, and think about how you want to split your forces. And it will, it will help a lot. Warriors. A stream of enemies will be upon us shortly. Stand firm, and we shall resist them. Okay, so this is probably a good situation to uh, use orbital bombardment once they once they start clumping up a bit more down the down the middle. Now our Taldarim immortals are just going to smoke most of the stuff on the ground. We're actually supply block. We want to make sure we get up to a uh, hundred supply or two hundred supply. Excuse me. Guess I've been playing uh, a little too much Zagara in the in the co-op. So as you can see, we have enough that thing they're dying before they can really clump up. I really want to be able to use Solar Bombardment here, and I think this is an opportunity to right here. Okay, and then they're sending more down the middle. Okay, Solar Bombardment helping a lot. Carrick's finally going to go down. Sorry, buddy. Let's get rid of these Guardians. They have a lot of them. More Void Rays, and we need Pylons right now, actually, right? So... I think another reason it's easy to get overwhelmed in these sections is um, you think like so much is happening and you can't react to all of it at once and you just think well shit like what am I supposed to what am I supposed to do and again you, you kind of psych yourself out you know use the spear of a dune as I just did help you out all right no oh, don't get don't do that all right everybody just clump back up here and turn and fight I think I may have lost a few things there because I did that. Okay, we still need more pylons, and we're almost maxed out. And I'm telling you, the reason that we're almost maxed out is because of those carriers healing our existing units. Now all shall be consumed by the cleansing flame. Okay, we are running out of money here, though. So, um, you do have to be a little vigilant. Um, we're near maxed out, though, which means we can start spamming cannons. They're okay. Let's clean up these Guardians. We're going to send these guys to the middle. Get rid of the Guardians. They're annoying. They just make you... They force you to send stuff elsewhere. This is looks like a good Solar Lance area. So we're going to do it like just like this. Watch all these Guardians die. Ha-ha! Hilarious. All right, let's go down and help the Teldream and hopefully save this Nexus. This is uh, a little dicey. But I think we'll be okay. Just fine. Okay, and we still want to stay maxed out. We lost another section of the spear. The assault cluster is failing. Solar Lance is offline. That's a shame because I love Solar the Lance. Keystone's energy matrix has reached the halfway point. We must hold on. And this is where you just start laying down cannons everywhere because we're near maxed out. We don't need to spend money elsewhere. So. Detecting multiple enemies on approach. They're attacking two entrances at once. Okay, so split your units. Split your units. We're going to send most to Carex because I think he's in the most trouble. And, uh, yes. Don't, do not, don't not split your units. You, you won't be able to react in time to save the other side. So it's, it's better to split your units. As long as you split your carriers because they can heal your other stuff, you'll be in good shape. Unfortunately, we don't have shield overcharge, but I think maybe for the next, uh, maybe for the next, uh, big attack from the Golden Armada, we'll have it up. Okay. I'd like to remake some of these these cannons up here. 
maybe even some monoliths. And because we're making mostly air units, you don't really have to worry about getting, uh... You don't have to worry about, um... Getting path blocked. And that's kind of a big deal. It doesn't seem like it would be, but it is. It's a big deal. You will get path blocked a lot if you were going mostly just ground units. Alright, so here's where Vorazun would be in trouble. Uh, she might go down here. Never mind, we kept her alive. Good job, Vorazun. You're doing great. Uh, what I would love to do now that I have a lot of money is, uh... Set up just a crap ton of cannons with the Tall Dream. Hyrak, I am detecting a much larger force from the Golden Armada inbound on the Keystone. Be prepared. So you want to get over to where this is coming early and kill it early, early, so that way you can react to the other sides as well. All right, let's divert something and kill that warp prism before it drops anything. We may lose one or two void rays here, but again, the healing carriers, the healing carriers are huge. Let's move on over here and get rid of this stuff. I need more cannons in this location. We have solar bombardment for the next big thing. This was not the big thing. Okay, great. Um, I would think that this next group would be the next big thing, so I may go ahead and use solar bombardment there. Let's go ahead and make some shield batteries and just make more and more cannons. And some monoliths too, because we can afford them. All right, everybody back up. Let's just go ahead and solar bombardment right there. We've got everybody coming in. All right, so the middle is pretty well defended because of solar bombardment. So we want to come up here and defend the Nerezim, because this can get real nasty, because it's in kind of an unconventional location. If you didn't have air units, you might actually have trouble here. This is also a good time to use, uh, go ahead and use that shield overcharge. You might as well. Don't, you know, don't lose anything to this attack, because you're going to lose it. We're going to lose that ability very, very soon anyway. Okay, so what we're doing just by spamming these, spamming all these abilities and spamming cannons everywhere is we're stopping our allies from taking too much damage, which means they're going to be able to support us when it really matters later. And by support us, I mean delay, because uh, we're going to lose a lot of stuff later uh, in very quick succession. So you can also, you know, you can build up here, make some monoliths just to help. All right, so we got to get down here now. Again, this is why I'm making a lot of cannons. As you can see, they can mostly defend themselves with those, uh, those purifier uh, colossi. But um, the... Obnoxious Guardians is where things kind of go awry. They don't really have any anti-air except for uh, Energizer Sentries, which really are not uh, anti-air. That's really not their, That's really not what they're good at. I'd like to get the Taldream some more defenses. There goes a uh, Shield Overcharge, unfortunately. Hull breach detected. Defensive lattice is offline. Shielding systems failing. And I'm serious. Just make, just make a lot of cannons just everywhere and. Now, like, I can spend the money now. I'm not using it on anything else. In fact, I still have vanguards alive because of those carriers. The, those carriers heal them up. Um, up here is where you're going to get attacked by uh, a really annoying, a very, very annoying uh, Golden Armada attack. So if you have the forethought to, you can lay down some monoliths up there, but you don't need them. Eventually, I think very soon, we're going to get attacked from all three sides, and it's it's overwhelming. There it is, actually. Against all three entrances. Resist them, brothers. Again, it's going to feel overwhelming, so this is where... Oh, I'm, I don't know what to do. Just pause the game. You know, I'm not going to stay paused, but just send some stuff up here. Send some stuff over here, and then send some stuff right down the middle. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal a carrier from this group, too. We want to stay, uh... We want to stay, uh, repaired. And I just split my forces three ways. Okay, these, uh, these cannons will eventually finish, or they're going to die. It doesn't matter. In both situations, we're getting some fr some serious frame rate issues here, which is about what I expected. We're going to watch our supply, and we'll see if we even lose anything. I think a lot of people might get stressed because they think, like, wow, I can't watch all three, and I'm sure that one side is getting fucked. I'm sure that one of my sides is getting totally fucked. And, in fact, all three sides are fine. My All three sides are absolutely fine, I'm telling you. And I, I hate to emphasize this so strongly, but those carriers... The fact that they heal everything is, like, unfair. So that's that's why I uh, I cannot speak highly enough of those carriers. If you're having trouble on any of these end missions, I'd recommend going and just making those carriers. They will they will do it for you. They will do it for you. We'll get some monoliths back here and some monoliths here and here. Okay, let's go and up the Nerezim, actually. We can split our forces, actually. We're getting to the point where we can split. We still have a Dragoon alive from the beginning because he's getting healed up. A shining symbol of arrogance. 
Let your pride be your downfall. Okay. So we're getting to the we're getting to the latter half here. This is uh if you can cut this area off. This is actually a good location to use uh this is actually a really good location to use um, Orbital Bombardment, but I did not do it in advance. It's a little too late now. You can see we lost a few things, but we can just re it up because we've got the money to do it. The Dark Templar can keep themselves alive because those Cor Corsairs are so good. Okay, and then my last group of... My last Solar Bombardment, because we're going to lose it here very soon, is going to be right down the center. Still have some money coming in. So just uh, rally him up here. Again, we still have a few of those vanguards alive. This is the right spot to use solar bombardment for sure. And then the Taldarim... The Taldarim are pretty well built up. They are fine. And we're going to lose solar... Bomb we're not going to be able to use solar bombardment again. We're, we're almost definitely going to lose it. We've got some guardians coming in, it looks like. So let's clean these up before we rotate again. I want to take a look at Karax's side, because over there is just a lot of cannons, but nothing else. Um, okay, that probe is stuck. And um, pretty much everything is stuck. I mean, this side is fine. They have so much stuff up here that I think we'll be in good shape. Let's get on over here and help them. We got monoliths up here. We can make more monoliths up in this area. Even more. I mean, we have nothing else to really spend our money on. We, everything is well fortified enough at this point. The only side that's a little sketchy is, um, is Alarak up here. So let's move on over here. So we're coming up on the end, and the end section I want to talk about in advance, you're going to get hit by two or three Golden Armadas. They're highlighted on the map. They say, oh, they're attacking from all sides. What that also means is you're getting hit by the Golden Armada on all, all sides, so you want to focus on killing the Golden Armada stuff. If you can get rid of the Golden Armada, generally your normal defense will last long enough to uh, keep the, the Keystone alive. Meanwhile, we can also get some cannons up top. Just get cannons... Anywhere and everywhere, these cannons will just delay if they do manage to make it up here, which, I, I, I mean, they might. I'm not going to say they definitely won't, because if they do, I'm going to look really silly. We move back here. We can help uh, Karex. We don't have to help Karex. He's fine. I mean, help Karex. He's dead, so I don't know what I'm saying. But a big thing here is we have a really mobile force. Right, get those. Get more Void Rays. Max us out. Gods, their ships are diving headlong into the Spear of Adun. Okay. The core is going critical. We can no longer support you. You have done enough, Rohana. The Keystone is approaching full power. Evade them as long as you can. So this is the big one. I'd recommend trying to meet this group out in advance. That way you can just get rid of them, and then you can react to anything else that you need to react to. blood is on your hands, Arcanus. False savior. Your defiance means their death. Hierarch, I see an unending tide of Protoss signatures. He's sending every last one of the possessed Templar against the Keystone. We will hold, Karax. We must. So I'd recommend in going out and meeting this group. This is what I'm talking about. They're highlighted on the map. Kill these groups of air units, because they're what can really push through and kill your stuff quickly. And then go out and meet this one. And then you just have to have the Nerezim built up enough that they can defend themselves for a bit of time. But... Uh, we're looking real good here. I'm going to throw down a quick save because we, we're pretty much maxed out and um, just make some more Void Rays and hope they finish in time. And if you can destroy these large air groups, then you'll free up, you'll free up a, a lot of uh, a lot of space for yourself. So now we're going to move up to the Nerezim. And what I might do is snag just a couple units and defend right here for a little bit of time. And then once things start getting uh, a little too squirrely, then we'll uh, we'll back up and just consolidate. So uh, we need my carriers up there to uh, to repair. As you can see, we're doing okay, mostly okay. A lot of stuff, right? Um, but I think we'll be okay. It really comes down to no matter how well you play, it really comes down to this last section, which kind of sucks. This is where we might just want to pull back and uh, just focus on. Maybe helping your allies nexus, like the the Taldarim probably will go down, the Nerezim might go down, but we have so many cannons over here, it's just going to distract the them. The okay, it looks like we're going to do this without losing any nexuses at all, which is great. And that's it. That's the mission. No nexus is lost. So Alarak doesn't even have to yell and complain at us. 
Energy matrix charged. The keystone is ready, Hierarch. Warriors, pull back to the keystone. Let them come to us. Cool. All right, and then uh, I don't know really what else to say. We'll skip this, and uh, that's my brutal walkthrough. I'll do the. I'll, I plan on doing the epilogue, but I can't guarantee I'm going to start it tomorrow. I've done one every day, and uh, I'm a little behind now. I'm, I'm only recording this a day before it's going out, just because I, I was traveling for a while. So you know, I might wait a little bit, just like a week or so, before I do the epilogue. But hey, thanks for watching this mission. Uh, everything can go to shit in the last five minutes. So if if you do lose at the very end there, there's nothing wrong with just restarting right before that section. Just because you lose there doesn't mean that the whole mission is hosed. Because if you have a near maxed out army, you should be able to hold. Um, as you saw, we didn't even lose any nexuses. We were close, but you're going to be close every time. It's very, very challenging to hold all those ramps. I had cannons everywhere on every single side, and those giant waves at the end still still will take them out. So you just have to anticipate that. There's no way you're going to have a perfect defense. So those carriers healing things up, absolutely huge. Void Ray's very helpful. Vanguard's very helpful. I found that to be the easiest way to defend on this map. There's clearly many, many other strategies that can be very successful, if not more successful than what I did. But I'm just pointing out, if you are having a lot of trouble with this map, I'd recommend using those Void Rays. Now, I've tried a few different things. I spent a lot of time, actually, uh, on this mission trying different things just because I wanted to to present as, as good a case as possible. I tried making just Void Rays without the carriers, and it's not nearly as effective. It's not nearly as effective. You'll get towards the end, but you'll have lost, or at least I lost a lot of Void Rays along the way, and I didn't have enough money to make more cannons. So what it did was um, I just bled myself dry until the very end and wasn't really able to complete the mission. So those carriers kind of the key if you're going to be making a more of a mechanical style uh, play. But um, Dark Templar, if you have enough at each side, even with the Overseers, they'll kill everything on the ground. Reavers, Corsairs, all that stuff, totally, totally viable. So anyway, use my strategy if you're having trouble. I, I can almost guarantee it will, will help you out. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's the end of the main, main campaign. I hope this walkthrough was helpful if anyone was stuck. I mean, it's been almost three weeks now the game has been out, so I really doubt anyone's still looking for a brutal walkthrough. But I made it! So, hey, maybe if you're watching this a year later and you're trying to beat the game on Brutal, this will help you out. Alrighty, this has been Jay Burino. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.